If it's not trending, it could mean that it's in the league of the classical. Today I'm going to be talking about the unfashionable truth. We've all heard the popular sayings, the truth will set you free, and tell the truth and shame the devil. In both contexts, we're encouraged to speak truth, regardless of the consequences. Most parents try to instill this in their kids from an early age, but as they enter adulthood, something happens. We begin to realize that we're only allowed to tell the truth as long as no one's feelings gets hurt. Suddenly, we can't be honest about any, anyone's flaws, even if it's a gigantic pimple at the end of your friend's nose. When asked, is it really big? Your response is expected to be, you can hardly notice it. As liberalism began to gain ground, so did a movement called political correctness. Now we're no longer allowed to speak our minds if it goes against the current narrative. For example, if a man says he's a woman, then regardless of what you know to be true, he must be addressed as he demands and failure to do so could result in a lawsuit. We now live in a society where truth is often silenced and replaced with falsehood or relative truth, sometimes referred to as my truth. Propaganda is used to run governments and lying has become perfectly acceptable if you think you have a good reason. When did we become so allergic to the truth? It probably stems from our quest to satisfy self. We all want to do and be whatever we want and silence any opposition. Relationships are more sycophantic than honest, in my opinion. Morality is at an all-time low as people live on really debauched, dishonest lives with no one to correct them for fear of being labeled judgmental. It appears that corruption and hypocrisy is at an all-time high. I am of the opinion that truth is fast becoming very scarce, a very scarce commodity. If we want to see an improvement in the way our societies and relationships are run, then we need to go back to the days when honesty was golden and truth was sacred. We need to be ready to hear and receive truth so as to proffer suitable solutions to our problems. We need to be able to speak our minds, no matter how unpalatable it may be, so that we can get to the bottom of difficult, sensitive issues. If we want true freedom, then we must wholeheartedly embrace truth. Mm -hmm. What's truth? Hmm. He's gone philosophical it's a good on question. that. <laughs> yeah. what's, because truth? what's truth to you may not be truth to me, Absolutely. depending on the. And, and so for me, I like they say, like we say, there are, to every story there are three sides. And so supporting your position now, mm -hmm. my side, your side, and the truth. The truth is always constant, mm -hmm. uh, depending on whether you witness, you know, the event or not. But you know, I also understand the truth you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, growing up, they tell you, speak the truth always, speak mm. the truth always. It depends on that same truth also. <laughs> uh, in some cases, it is constant. It is in some other cases, it is not constant. And so in that case, perception now takes the place of truth. Because the way I perceive it might be different from the way Chuka perceives it or the way Ronke perceives it. And, and so if I speak from my perception, from where I'm standing, that might be my truth, but not your truth. Mm. And from the opposition also, when you speak your own truth, it might be different from my truth. So in that case, you know, so people are trying to tend to find a balance, you know. And, and, and so that's why I think, but, you, you know, with uh, politics involving <laughs> most of these things, it is also very difficult now to have a universal truth. Mm. Uh, or most especially also when you also have a system of government that is different from one another. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so that, that's, you know, a, a bit philosophical though. Yeah, but, uh, well, it it, it, the is, it is a philosophical... Um, <laughs> no, but also, I mean, I, I think when she was, she was dealing with people who are, in a way, they want to be lied to. That's the impression yes, I get. Yes. So, so you're, people like, you know, when he was talking about the mommy or you some time back, you know, you want to surround yourself with praise singers, people who come and tell you how great thou art. And it's actually destructive for you and for them because, you know, I tend to feel that what you need, are, especially in politics, I'm glad you referred to politics because that's what's killing us here. We have a lot of people in power who surround themselves with people who just tell them the things they want to hear. And they're almost like divorced from the rest of society. And you almost wish somebody could just put their nose in the problem so that they will wake up and do something 
something mm -hmm. about it. You know, so that's my problem with sycophancy is that it actually destroys the person you're, you're hailing and destroys society at large. So I personally wouldn't want to have friends around me who do, didn't once in a while say something to me that made me sit up. Mm -hmm. I would be distrustful of them because I'm sure I'm doing things that they should be correcting. So if every day all they have to say to me is, oh, wow, everything you're doing is just, and then I'm suspicious. That the so best that, I only trust that people who once happen. in a while, mm, <laughs> and I know Uche is good at doing straight talk. So people like that, I tend to value. And if I was going to ask someone's opinion, I'll go to those people, even though I know I may not like what they have to say, but I trust, at least I trust where they're coming mm -hmm. from. You know, and also, when you now start dealing with the issue of the man who wants to be referred to as a woman, mm -hmm. I just had to say, well, not in Nigeria, at least for now. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do any lawsuit against someone for saying you're not a man. <laughs> you're, you're a woman. Well, a, man, a, a woman cannot be a man, and a man cannot be a woman. There you go. For that it. is but it's how he feels. That's he feels a he's a woman. Truth. Mm -hmm. And no matter how the man feels, mm -hmm. We're not here to deal with feelings. Yes. In that so that's why you're now isolating the truth. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're not, he's a man. If he wants to feel like a woman, no that's problem. He tell certain people, mm -hmm. they treat me like can't a woman. now tell Someone, me I should feel. Who was it? There's I, a transgender man who just recently some, had a baby. From the, from it the was in the news. He's a, he's had a baby. Yeah, he must have done something. Anyway, anyway. There's also somebody who says he will be referred to as they. Mm. I, I can't yes. What does that mean? Yes. Yeah. They, that that it's, threw me. They call it yeah. binary. Yeah. They, these yeah. are now known as non-binary binary, binary yeah. individuals. So you talk and, about they. And they are called they, and they have yeah. babies, yeah. as in babies that are they. Neither men they nor women. They don't raise these babies boys or girls. as boys or girls. They don't even tell them. The they wait for the baby to feel to grow into a child and say you. You know what? I feel like a dog, and then they might raise yeah, that's the baby right, as a dog. dog. Okay. So, you know. so very soon, some people will feel like adults, yes. and so you will have a child as president. Who, who's a, who is as a, president? No, no, you have a child <laughs> who, is a, is, who is older than his father exactly, because, because he feels, he feels that like way. his grandfather, yes, yes. Yes. and so he should be raised. Should be allowed like to a, watch. Yeah, I mean, I want to clarify <laughs> the real, the kind of truth I'm speaking about is really the, like the ones we're discussing now. <laughs> I mean, a couple of things, like mm. you rightly said. What's the truth? Mm. I have mine, you have yours, yeah, there's the universal truth. The danger that we run is that there's going to come a time when somebody's going to wake up and say, I was born a pedophile. Yes. And I want mm. and your I baby. Exactly. The time has you know, and it's that's my get, truth. It's going to get that bad. Mm. Yes, and I, I tend to tell my daughter, if I'm going out of the house and maybe I smell funky or my, something is funny, if you really love me, you will be the one to tell me. You will not yeah. wait for me to come on this show and everyone here <laughs> will say, oh, you? that don't care the posh that smells. Yeah. <laughs> so the person that loves you will tell you Absolutely. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So whilst there may be your truth, my truth, there is a universal That's truth, like yes. Chuka said. So mm -hmm. we must love each other enough mm -hmm. to begin to mm -hmm. tell the truth or yeah. else it will come to the point where somebody yeah. is going to have a baby. You can't send your child to school because somebody is waiting because we Born, He's born down pedophile. Pedophile. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree also. And then um, you, you find out that in politics, really, mm. I tell people, once a friend of mine is elevated to that level, uh, after <laughs> congratulating you, I leave you. Because you won't be ready to hear the truth after that. No, yeah, because you have the people are the most dangerous set of people. You know, in politics are those along the corridors of power. Oh, wow. So right. the moment you get into power, your friends, you know, will take the back seats. Mm. Yes. Those are the people you relate with daily. And those people never tell you the truth. Mm. It, takes, it takes a man who wants to know the truth to break away from those at the, at the corridor to say, look, you know what? Come. Um, the current minister for state for budget once told us that the, mom, the reason Adam Sushomole appointed him as commissioner was because he told him, he said, look, I know what power is, but I want a few of my friends who could still be able to look me in the eye and say, look, you know, comrade, you are wrong here. Do you think they're still telling him the truth now? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> narrating yeah. what you know. Yeah. And, and so you have people who would feel, look, I want to hear the truth. Mm. You have and to be deliberate some, about it. Yeah, you have to be, del for you to actually hear the truth, you have to be deliberate. Yeah, we talk about feelings then, mm. because it, it struck me that I, I don't see myself as someone who would ever lie. You know, I know it sounds extreme to some people because no, they think I, everybody lies, mm -hmm. but I don't see myself. However, I'm not about to hurt someone's feelings by, so I have to think hard. You know, so it takes, it takes something, I have to assess how critical that thing is and whether you're even ready to receive it before I now approach you and if it's a make or break issue. So these are things I weigh before I now come and sit you down and say. Yeah, that's true because yeah. not, not everybody wants to hear. And yeah. not everybody's ready to hear too. I think so many want people to are ready them. to hear if it's constructive. Okay, so, how, so how, you present how you present it. If it's yes. constructive, so if, if, you tell me if go I to do hair. a presentation oh. and there's a typographical error in it and you say, oh, this doesn't look good on your school, 
there's a typographical error in it. Mm. Or if you dig because you want to hurt my feelings. Yeah, that's mm. yes. And that's different. Because you yeah. find that in a lot of childhood friends, when one steps up and is doing better than the others, mm. then the dig comes. Mm. And then you find that your real friends will be the ones that will tell you the truth that, oh, like I was coming out, my, I sent my pictures to my friend, what do I look like, my makeup, they'll be like, oh, this one is that, that one, that constructive feedback. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I like that. Okay, well, you heard us. Standing apart from the crowd is often underrated. After the break, Chuka is set to go maverick on us. What's new, Chuka? <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment impressed. you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.